my understanding that you were given 15 minutes, mm -hmm. but that nothing happened for 45 minutes. Oh, that's very incorrect. We, and we have a lot of footage of it if you'd like to see it. Um, actually, uh, not to, not to no, speak no, out of turn, please. but actually we sent video um, mm -hmm. of proof of what was destroyed, of our actions to get stuff out of Kanawa, and also of the police actions. I think there were a lot of tents that were slashed with uh, with box cutters. We have footage of everything, and we sent that all to Major Drew um, at his request um, because we, um, we were given about 15 minutes, and there were only a few of us in the park, and everyone who wasn't in the park was held off on the sidewalk and told that once those people in the park were able to leave, that those that we those of us on the sidewalk would be able to go back in the park and get our belongings. And before we were able to go back in the park and get our belongings, we were told no one else would be entering, and the bulldozers came and bulldozed all the rest of the property. Um, Can I ask you to do something? Absolutely. Did you send it directly to me? I would. Footage. Yes, of course. Um, you could send it to my email address. It's on the card. I, I will send it directly to you. Um, not that I, I don't know if this is, I mean, I, this is something we want you to be fully informed of. Um, but, I mean, at this point, that's done and it's over and it's happened and it's time to move towards um, us creating a, a new dialogue between us. Um, I have a clarifying question very quickly. Um, as to the interpretation of the the, um, the encampment citation, is that something that the city attorney is capable of putting out? That the city attorney is interpreting the statute in this manner? I mean, not that you would be willing to, but is that possible? Um, to to me, that seems like an issue of you know statute statutorial interpretation and not an issue of legislative action. So, I mean, this might be something that doesn't have to go through city council. This might be something that is said, we think that, at least in reference to the encampment law, that we can deem this to be freedom of speech, and that gets us both away from having to worry about the enforcement of that statute. There might be occasions when uh, an interpretation of an existing ordinance uh, could go in more than one direction. Uh, there might be uh, situations where, uh, in fact, an ordinance uh, on its face conflicts with the First Amendment. Uh, this, these cases, in my opinion, are not either of those cases. So it's my view that uh, any relief that you might want, as the mayor suggested, uh, would need to come from city council. If I may, was that was that also your opinion on the original noise ordinance that was being done? I wasn't here. Oh, okay. All right. So oh. there is history of ordinances being ruled unconstitutional. Well, sure, that yeah. happens all the time. Yeah. I and, and and I am not arrogant enough to suggest to you <laughs> that it couldn't happen in this case. What I am suggesting to you is that, in my opinion, it would not happen in this mm -hmm. case. That is my opinion. I mean, I think the safest route is to get city council to change the law. Well, I think another thing, too, something the mayor said, you highlight it. Um, there's an amount of discretion that any executive branch has. I mean, you know, obviously a, a police officer doesn't have to stop every person that he or she sees speeding. You know, the fact that they stop one speed or not another all by itself isn't enough, but there are limits to that discretion. And then at that point in time, your sworn duty to enforce the law does kick in. Mm -hmm. So I think what the mayor has demonstrated and we told you is he has exercised a degree of discretion and there has and continues to be pushback on the price that's paid for that. Um, but that is, in my opinion, within those bounds of discretion. Now, you, you can't just ignore a law for forever. But those are discretionary things, not, I'm not going to. You don't have the option to not. You do have the option within bounds to have. And that's, I think, what our history up to this point has been. Well, we have, um, we've got tens of thousands of dollars that have been spent by the city government on quality free speech. Um, last Wednesday, we remained uh, 
other than the two arrests that we had, which were that was our personal choice not to, to take off their, their face. We remained legal the entire night, and I'm not sure what you guys spent, but I would imagine that it would be quite a bit of money. And um, when we went to Monroe Park and we were around, we stayed on the sidewalks and we were marching around Monroe Park. We have footage of many people just walking around in the park. So we were stopped because we were going to go in and talk. And that to, to us is a, a direct violation of the First Amendment because why were they allowed to be in the park after dark if it's all about sunset laws and yet we're being stopped at the entrances because we're going to go in and say something. I think if you all read the laws now, don't just better not. The ordinances specifically say under what circumstances you know people can be in the park after dark with the sidewalks and streets mm -hmm. and passing through and the ordinances are very clear on what's allowed on that. So you know people can go through the park. So, people were sitting in the park. Yeah, no, that's when you get to the And they were being arrested. You can go through. You can use the sidewalks. Go you can use the roads to go through. After. But we weren't allowed to enter there. Mm -hmm. Right, so we never had the opportunity to demonstrate. Here yeah, I mean, that's because we were going to speak. That's a direct violation of First Amendment. That you guys, that the city government are spending money on to violate First Amendment rights. And then chase us around the city to violate First Amendment rights. Harassing us in the park when we were there legally, telling us on the hour, you know, you have to leave at three. I mean, in no other circumstance would that happen. Um, if I may, yeah, um, it's obvious and apparent that there are some things being done there, and I do applaud mm -hmm. you for those. And my experiences, and uh, historically, what I've seen is there has been lines that have been obscured between the people who are subject to the legislation and the legislation themselves. I believe there needs to be a more cooperative relationship so that those of goodwill and courage in our society uh, within these communities, citywide, statewide, nationwide, and worldwide can develop a more workable relationship so that, I guess all we're saying is that we want to utilize our ability to peaceably assemble in order to be an extension of the legislation to attend to these social problems. And I believe as we continue the dialogue, not only here, but throughout history, the people will begin to learn how to develop a more cooperative relationship with the legislation so that we can do the work that's not being done at the end of a business day when lawyers go home, mayors go home, city councilors go home. We just want to be able to uh, assist in the correcting of these particular bills. Uh, no, it will not, I guess, uh, cause us to morph into perfect people, but we've raised the perfect awareness of the empathy toward the value of the human condition. And I think that's the central thing we're utilizing our First Amendment rights to peacefully assemble that petition to be able for a redress of certain grievances that are not allowing us to actually assist the legislation in, in this operation of correcting these now I'm thinking about um, Kennedy, go back. Kennedy was doing a lot of good things. And he was you know, for the people, trying to thank the people. Well, Martin and still took to the streets. We were, like he just said, we're trying to, we're doing the same thing. We're not trying to cause chaos or destroy anything that's established. We're trying to assist the framework. Are you cute? I am cute. <laughs> um, I was in the room that you were referencing. And so the I pulled a quote off your website, okay. and it says, the witness of the church in the community is a telling thermometer of the church's witness. And I believe that we are on the same level at some point when it comes to the social changes that need to be made. And I feel that our interaction we have now has been very, I don't wanna say hostile, but for lack of a better word, at some point. And you can become a compass in a sense. We're not asking you to take over our problems and we're not asking you to make it easier for us. But if you could point us in the direction of change. If we're going about things in the wrong way, instead of just telling us this is the wrong way, we help us do it the right way. Because we really are trying for the same thing. And there are people within the community that want the change and they want that help and they want to be educated on what's going around. But it seems as if every time that's attempted to be brought around, it's just bumped out. I I, um, I would be more than happy to, to, to continue to work with you and I, 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 I'm glad you brought that up because I don't want us to have a hostile relationship. Um, I think that 
nothing can be accomplished when we're not talking about the real deal. So I'm open to communication. Um, and I hope that you will involve the city council in the communication because if anything's going to get done, it's going to require that kind of a uh, network. So um, uh -huh. that's what we're going to take. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Beck. Yes, thank you. Um, I've also done some research. I've gone online. I have looked at your anti-poverty commission announcement that was made in March. I have read the document. And you've identified rightly the need to improve education and educational attainment, <coughs> the need to improve transportation, and also enhance community life. And that's social justice, well stated. It's hard for me to reconcile that though, with the disproportionate use of police force, which seems to be primarily for intimidation, which we've seen. It's also been documented by Mayor Kwan's interview with the BBC that there was a nationwide conference call with 18 mayors and the Department of Homeland Security that was clearly meant to send a message. We've also seen rollbacks of- Who's Mayor Kwan? The mayor of I'm surprised you don't know that. I, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I followed what has happened there, but I don't know Mayor Kwong personally. And it didn't want to die, so. if I She's under a lot of heat for, yeah. and, and actually her legal advisor stepped down. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Because he was very much upset with the way that she overstepped um, and, and inappropriately dealt with the public on these very serious issues multiple crises that we face. I'm not mistaken, um, there were you know, violent interactions with police in the business. Right? There were so violent were, interactions from the police. From the police. Well, yes. Yes. yes, very violent. Yeah. Very violent yes. from someone, the police. Did someone die? <laughs> and, and someone was in a coma. I think. Yes. 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 Scott Olson. Scott Olson. Um, so, right. I, 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 applaud, I applaud your uh, identification as a child of civil rights. I don't think one necessarily had to have been born in the 40s or 50s or 60s to call oneself a child of civil rights. I think we're all beneficiaries of that system. Mm -hmm. Or we've all uh, learned from those traditions. And I think we're all students here of Howardson, which, uh, whose book Sir brought. I think we're also all students of Dr. King. I'm an atheist, but I consider Dr. King to be one of the most genuine, courageous people, and he's really a hero of mine. And so to hear you state that you're a child of, of civil rights, and then you have hope that a Blue Ribbon Commission will solve the roots, or solve the problems of poverty, seems a little, um, I don't want to use the word naive, but you should know better that there have never been commissions which have investigated the roots of poverty in a way that would benefit the public. You should know that, as Howard's end points on, change always comes from the bottom up, whether it's been labor unions or it's been um, working conditions for factory workers or children or women's rights. It's always been a populist movement. And so I understand your current executive position as mayor. I respect that you've um, served your state for numerous years, as well as your parish. And we, we, we certainly applaud that, but we also have empathy for you, because in this position that you currently um, occupy, pardon the pun, <laughs> um, we, we, we understand that you are under pressure, political pressure, and, and that we have this very right-wing party which, although its ideologies and policies and proposals and analyses have been discredited by the world, as evidenced by this global Occupy movement, well, it's, it's still there. And so we would like for you to take a stand. Take a stand um, and, and show that you really stand for human rights. I'm not talking about this limited document of the Constitution. I'm talking about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. Which, 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 which looks at human rights in five dimensions. Cultural rights, social rights, economic rights, civil rights, and political rights. And I think if you, if you do value 
the, these public spaces and our the need for us to be able to to dialogue and dissent in those public spaces at all times. If you recognize the need for